Mindful Life Practice Community. All right, perfect. And we're going to start in our um, seated shape today. So you can come to be crisscross. You can be sitting flat on your mat. You can be sitting on a block. Angle. Yeah, a bit better. All right. So come to crisscross on your mat and just bring yourself to stillness. Centering your awareness and your attention on your breath in this moment. So when I started this month of October, I intended to move through the yamas, the yoga sutras daily. I've obviously lost track of that. I think I did it for a few days and then I forgot. <laughs> and so I'm circling back to this idea. So the fourth yama in the first limb of the yoga sutras, it's about brahmacarya. And brahmacarya can be translated into moderation or finding the middle way. And I think in 2020, we kind of live in this world that is more, more, more. This year, it's been all about kind of making do with less and finding the middle. So I'm going to encourage you today to find the middle with your practice. I know I'm feeling a bit coldish, a little bit of a runny nose, a little bit of sneezing. So I'm going to be taking it easy with my energy. I encourage you to tune into your energy. How are you feeling energetically? You've been cooped up in the house all day. Maybe you have a lot of energy to expend. And if you're feeling more tired or more exhausted, maybe you want to take a bit of child's poses, but there's no right or wrong. There's just what you need from this hour. Let's take a few deep and filling breaths and use this moment to scan your energy. Inquiring, what do I need from this moment right now? Then we'll invite a little bit of movement with our bodies while we're seated. So can you slowly just start to circle your body forward, kind of getting a bit of movement through the hips. Keep breathing as you do this. <coughs> I apologize for my sneezing. <laughs> it's a good thing we're not in an actual studio right now. Take a couple more. and then circle the other way. A 
actually I've thought about that in the past. We used to have so many people cooped up into our yoga studio. And I remember being a yoga teacher and wanting to teach, but also not wanting to show up sick. How unappealing would it be if you had a teacher who was like sneezing and coughing everywhere? <laughs> Take one more circle. It's one of the beauties of our virtual practice. <laughs> and then come all the way back through center. And then we're gonna do some seated cat cow flows. So on your inhale, just pop up through your chest and expand through your heart. And then when you exhale, curl your spine in, tuck your chin. Inhale. And then exhale. So I think sometimes in our modern day life, there's like this glorification of being busy. We're constantly pushing our energy outwards. We're constantly go, go, go. What we've learned from this year is that actually a lot of things can be done with a bit less like busyness and intensity and force. And there's room for more space. There's room for more stillness. So the goal here is to redirect our energy inwards, to have an hour focusing on ourselves. Take one more. And then come all the way back through center. And then just drop your right earlobe down towards your right shoulder and expand through your left traps muscle. Me and Siobhan were actually talking about this yesterday because she's been really making an effort to show up for as many MLBC classes as she can. And um, we were discussing how by her making time for herself, it's actually making her a better teacher and she actually has more time for her students. And, and I find the same as well. Maybe taking your right hand and anchoring it on the left side of your head so you have more expansion through your left traps. I think a lot of us think like, you know, I don't have time for that. I'm too busy for that. But when we make time for ourselves, it ends up allowing us to be able to kind of come at our lives from a more calm and centered place. Can you lift the head all the way back up through center? And then drop the left earlobe down towards the left shoulder, maybe taking the left palm, anchoring it on the side of the skull. Nice deep stretch through the left traps or right traps muscle. And then can you come all the way back up through center? Land onto the palms. Finding your way into a table. And from your table, leave your left palm where it is. Sweep your right arm up towards the sky. Let's thread our right arm underneath the left. Landing onto the right shoulder, the right cheek, and maybe sweeping the left arm around, getting a nice little hook near the right hip. How does that feel? Come all the way back through center, land your left palm, land your right palm. And then lift your left arm up towards the sky, opposite side. Nice, thread your left arm under, land onto your left cheek, your left shoulder. And then maybe weave the right arm all the way around, hooking it near the right hip.
come all the way back through center, placing the right palm down, placing the left palm down, lifting up into your table. Leave your left knee where it is, extend your right long leg long on the mat. Sorry, I have a block on my mat. So land your right toes down and then we're just gonna rock forward and back, getting into the right calf. And then come all the way into neutral, lengthen and lift your right leg up. And then take your left toes off the side of the mat, bring your right arm to lift all the way up towards the sky. So you're balancing in kind of this variation of a half moon. And maybe you kick your right heel back towards your right um, ankle and kind of open up through the heart a little bit. Reach your right leg and your right fingertips long, back up, and then land your right foot. You're going to lift up and expand through your heart. Breathe into your left side body. Come all the way back through center. Plant the palms, land your right knee, and then take a simple cat cow just to stretch it out. And then come all the way into neutral. Let's extend our left leg long and then do a little bit of rocking back and forth. Normally my vinyans start a bit more active. <laughs> I guess I'm in a mood today. <laughs> I hope you're in the mood too. Do one more little stretch. And then lift your left leg up. Take your right toes off the side of the mat. Lift your left arm up so you bring to expand through the body. And then maybe you kick the heel back, hooking the left palm around the left ankle and then open up through the heart and chest. Three, two, nice. And then one, extend through the left leg, lift the left arm up and then land your left foot, lift all the way up, and then reverse your warrior, expand through the right side body. And then come all the way back down, land your palms, land your knees. And then this time we're gonna press through the palms, tuck the toes, lift up and back to your down dog. So we're going on a bear hunt yoga. When we're going on a bear hunt, we're gonna catch a big one. I'm not scared. <laughs> we come across our thing, like the grass or the forest or whatever. And we go, we can't go under it. So you come all the way forward into a plank and then move through your back bend. So maybe you lower through a chaturanga into an up dog or maybe you just lift up, yeah. And then we can't go over it. <laughs> so you tuck your toes, lift all the way up and back to your down dog. And then we have to go through it. So you're gonna bend your knees and just step your feet forward. Nice, take an inhale, halfway lift, lengthen through the spine. Take an exhale, fold. And then inhale, sweep your arms all the way up towards the sky, reach through the fingertips, and then take your palms through heart center. Now let's take three sun salutations. So take an inhale, reach your arms up towards the sky. Sorry, half sun salutations. Exhale, fold. So we're only going half of the way. Inhale, halfway lift. Nice, exhale, lower. And then you press through the feet, inhale, lift the arms all the way up. And then exhale your palms and heart center. And then take two more. Moving with your own breath. I think all of you are quite familiar with yoga. Just be confident that your body knows what to do next. And if it messes up, there is no right or wrong. It's part of my memoir writing today. I was um, reflecting on my first experience with yoga um, or one of my first. I did a style called Iyengar yoga where we would stand around and, and critique one person's variation of the pose. 
trying to accomplish the perfect warrior two or the perfect warrior one. And it made me extremely self-conscious. I was 13 years old and I felt like I just wasn't doing it right. And I was really fearful about my pose being picked apart. I don't remember this ever happening. We're gonna meet in mountain pose. I think the teacher sensed my insecurity and never chose me, but I think that fundamental experience has shaped one of my philosophies of a teacher, which is that there is no right or wrong. There's just finding what feels good and, and moving from that place. Let's take an inhale, arms up towards the sky. Take an exhale, fold. Take an inhale, halfway lift. Nice, take an exhale, fold, land the palms, step back to a down dog. If you want to take your vinyasa here, go ahead. I will write, wipe my runny nose. <laughs> and then leave your left foot where it is. Take your right leg up towards the sky, three-legged dog, big extension. And let's peel the right knee in, step the right foot between the palms. And then inhale, lift all the way up into a crescent lunge. When you find your crescent lunge, I want you to give me a moment of high intensity where you have energy and extension through your arms and your shoulders. And then give me a moment where you're as lazy as possible with it. <laughs> and then can you find the middle between these two elements, between effort and ease? Find the middle. Take one more breath. And then exhale to come forward, plant the palms, step your right foot back. Option to vinyasa, option to your down dog. Nice. Extension through your left leg, lift up. And then pull your left knee and step your left foot between your palms. Nice, inhale, come all the way up, press and lunge. Can you give a moment of strength? And then a moment of surrender. And then find the middle between these two elements, strength and surrender, effort and ease, intention and softness. One more breath. And then exhale, come forward, plant the palms, either step back, straight to down dog or vinyasa. Beautiful, you got it. From your down dog, lift your right leg up, three-legged dog. Now bend the knees, stack the hips, reach your right toes over to the left. Maybe you stay here, maybe you come forward and flip your dog, landing your right toes, Lifting your heart. Come all the way forward with your right palm. Step your right foot between your palms. And then once again, we're going to inhale all the way up, press and lunge. Find the middle. And as the body finds the middle, the mind finds the moment. As the body steps into the middle, the mind steps into the moment. Land the left heel, open your arms long so your right arm extends, your left arm extends. Feel a bit of fire building in your leg. Feel a little bit of a shake. Just stay. No need to rush this process or this experience. How would it feel to reverse your warrior? Landing your left palm, lifting your right arm up. Nice. Come all the way up and back to your warrior two. And then invite length along your right leg. Shorten your left stance walk or reach your right fingertips forward and then take your right arm alongside your right calf lift your left arm up towards the sky 
finding your triangle. Option one, stay here. And then option two, shift your weight onto your right foot, right fingertips, lift into your half moon. I think this week on the podcast, Yasmin was saying how much she hates yeah, um, half moon. <laughs> and Sarah was saying how much she loves it. Who's here? <laughs> if you want to kick your left heel towards your left hand, go ahead, making a bit of a connection. This is called sugar cane, or that's what I was taught it was called. I've heard other things because there's no right or wrong way. <laughs> there are so many names for so many poses. There's so many ways to do different poses. Don't get caught up in black and white beliefs, habits. If you have the foot, release it. Can you take your palms into heart center now and then lift your heart up so you're in a warrior three? Big extension, stay here, get strong for your leg. You got this left hip level with the right five, four, nice work, three, two, and then one to just land your left foot and then come to stand straight up. Find and feel your mountain. What has shifted within you energetically since you started this practice 20 minutes ago? And if nothing, that's okay too, you're here. That is all that matters. Take an inhale, arms up towards the sky. Take an exhale, fold. Take an inhale, lift. Take an exhale, lower, plant the palms, step back to your down dog. Maybe you do that we're going on a bear hunt. <laughs> coming forward to your up dog, coming back to your down dog. Maybe you just stay in your down dog, it's all good. And then how would it feel to extend your left leg up, three-legged dog, bend through your left knee, stack the hips, maybe flip your dog, landing the left toes, lifting your heart. Staying here for three for two and then for one land your left palm come all the way forward and around and take a big step forward with your left foot lifting all the way up coming into your crescent lunge can you find your strength and then your surrender and your effort and ease and as your body steps into the middle, the mind steps into this moment. Is there wisdom in the middle? Is there wisdom in the present moment? Land your right heel, open your heart, extend through your left arm, your right arm, and then just get strong through your leg. I went on a yoga teacher training with a teacher who would make us hold poses for like 90 seconds at a time. It was awful. <laughs> he said it was resilience training. <laughs> he said we were training our minds to say, I am not that stress response, right? Because the longer you stay in a pose, the more stressed out you're going to get about it. And that frustration or that discomfort, you're reminding yourself that you can do this with your breath. You're reminding yourself that you can do this with your approach. Also giving yourself permission to take rest if rest is needed. Moderation, right? Finding the middle. Can you land your right palm, lift your left arm up and then direct your breath into your left rib cage, the part of the body that has expanded and opened? And then lift your body all the way up, lengthen through your left leg, 
You can shorten your stance a tiny bit with your right foot. Read your left arm forward, forward, forward. Left arm clocks alongside your left leg. Right arm extends up. This is your trikonasana, your triangle. Can you feel an expansion and opening through your collarbone? Maybe your gaze reaches up towards your thumb, but again, that's just an option. Shift weight onto your left foot, left fingertips. Maybe you take your Ardha Chandrasana, your half moon. <laughs> I'm wiping my nose well in half moon. <laughs> Pretty amazing. <laughs> Can you kick your right heel to grip towards your right palm? This is your sugar cane. How does that feel? And if you're like, no, thank you, then say no, thank you. No offense taken. Release your right foot, release your right hand. Lift your left hand up, extend through your right leg. Find your warrior three and use your palms firmly planting together to connect to your core, to connect to your heart, balance for five. Whoa, for four, for three. Don't look at me, I'm falling. Two, and then one, bring your right foot up to stand and then anchor through both feet. Thumbs connect to your heartbeat. Breath connects to this moment. Head balancing on both shoulders. What is there to learn from the present moment? Take an inhale, arms up towards the sky. Take an exhale, fold. Take an inhale, halfway lift. Nice, take an exhale, lower, plant the palms, step back to your down dog. Maybe traveling through a vinyasa. Nice, and then we're gonna make our shift into yin by landing the knees and resting the forehead and taking a few deep breaths into your child's pose. Breathe into your low back. And as you drop into stillness and you drop into this shape, maybe reflecting on our intention, which was all about moderation, right? Brahmacharya. I had coffee with Rawad this week and he said something memorable to me. We were talking about my Starbucks addiction. And by the way, I'm over a week off Starbucks. <laughs> but he said to me, it's kind of about looking at your life and saying, where am I not living with intention? Right, in what areas of my life do I need to adapt to be living with intention? So where do you want to place your energy? Where do you want to dig deeper in your life? Where is it necessary to tone it back a little bit? to move through your life feeling nourished. Feeling taken care of. Feeling with your cup full instead of your cup empty.
Just taking one more round of breath in our child's pose. And then we're gonna come all the way up, rolling onto seated. I'm gonna invite you, if you have a bolster or a pillow, I'm just gonna get a pillow because my cat is asleep on my bolster and I don't wanna wake her up. <laughs> so you can place a bolster or a pillow on the mat behind you. Ooh, Leanne has a bolster, very fancy in quarantine. <laughs> I guess the husband must have dropped that off. <laughs> Tell me after. <laughs> so you're gonna bring your soles of feet together and you're gonna lay your heart on the pillow or the bolster. And then decide what to do with your palms. Palms can be pressing on your heart and your belly. I love this connection because it helps me um, kind of really feel and find my breath and stay present. You can also have your hands anchored on your thighs if you need a bit more ground in this. You can spread your palms, lay them flat and face up for just a bit more openness. There is a saying in yoga. I think it was said by one of the great sages. I don't remember who. Saying if you quiet the mind, the soul will speak. So if you learn to sit in stillness and in deep contemplation, that's when you really learn about yourself. What do I need? What nourishes me? Maybe even what do I need less of in my life? Something I've been exploring is moderating my social media. You know, I've touched base with some of you about this, but I've turned off all my notifications. And I'm still checking my social media, but I'm just not, my state of flow is no longer interrupted by messages, by pop-ups. And when I'm really working on a project, I can really get into it and then take breaks when I decide a break is needed. It's letting go of that need to, to hear every message instantaneously. And the knowledge that if it's really important, someone will call. Just take a few more breaths in this heart opening and hip opening pose.
So where am I not living with intention and what changes can I make to live with intention? And then if you're on that pillow, maybe just slowly come all the way up. Just slide to the side. <coughs> slowly lower all the way down, spine back on the mat. Just give yourself one moment in neutral. And then take your knees into your chest. We're gonna drop into a spinal twist. So there's a ton of different options. If you want something simple, you can just bring your knees to stack and drop them both over to the right. And if you wanna take something deeper, you might tuck your left thigh on top of your right and then shift your knees over towards the, or sorry, shift your hips over towards the left and then drop both knees over towards the right. So this is called twisted root pose. It can be quite a deep twist. Maybe placing a pillow underneath the knees if they feel like they're just suspended or feel free to uncross and just simply bring them to stack. That works too. So the most balancing of yoga poses is twists. Like they calm us and they equalize us. Twists are this beautiful metaphor. To help us find balance in our lives. It can cool and ignite us. They can prepare or calm us. When we come back to neutral after a twist, we're reminded that to balance, we need to release after holding on. And after every inhale, there's an exhale. Let's take another breath on this side. And then just slowly bring yourself all the way up to neutral. Landing your left foot.
can just gently bring the knees to knock. Feeling your spine as is. And then just take it the opposite way. So crossing your right thigh on top of your left, or maybe just leaving the knees to stack and shift hips over to the right and then drop your knees over to the left and gaze over the left or the right shoulder. Cushioning yourself if needed. So the Buddha taught that we're continuously being pulled in different directions. Right, we either move towards things or people that we desire. We move away from things or people that annoy us and irritate us. We want what we don't have. We turn away from what we do have. We all find ourselves in awkward, uncomfortable situations in our yoga, in our life. And the goal is to keep coming back to the center. Right, balance is acceptance. It's about meeting life as it meets you. calmly, without drama or fuss. Right, when we stand in the middle, we kind of end that fight to be somewhere else from, from where we are right now. Stay in that twist for just a few more breaths. And then you're going to slowly come up all the way through center. You can just bring your feet to land, bring your knees to knock, say, take some deep breaths. Now the final thing we're gonna do before our Shavasana it is a trick from Jill's class I took last night. Jill's amazing, she's one of my first yoga teachers, love her. Um, you're gonna take your block and you're gonna place your block. How do we do this? I hope I do it correctly. You're gonna to try to place your block so that the ridge of it comes underneath your, um, I think it's called your occipital lobe. 
So you're kind of finding the ridge of the block to line up with that point on the back of your skull, like the nape of your neck right here. And if you have any um, pain immediately with this, please back off. But we're gonna place the block kind of finding the right angle for this. And it might be different for each individual. I have mine on a little bit of a tilt. And then using the pressure, you can just kind of rock your head back and forth until you find little sweet spots of tension. And if there's anywhere that feels particularly tense, you can just linger, kind of massaging it out. I know I carry a lot of tension in my neck. And so this was just like so releasing when we did it last night. You roll it out for a few more breaths. And then whenever you are ready to release, you're just gonna lift up and lay the back of your head down, take your block to the side. Take your knees into your chest, give your body a sweet little hug. Thank yourself for showing up today. I know that that is the hardest part sometimes. And then when you're ready, slowly stretch your way out into a Shavasana, into a seated meditation, into whatever pose you want to choose to end off on. Allowing whatever pose you take to be a container. To hold you. And know that I will bring you back when the time is up.
like a feather blowing through the breeze, like a bird in a tree, like a dolphin in the sea. I want to fly high, so high, like an eagle in the sky. And when my time has come, I will let it all go with a sigh. Pat your mama, I'm coming home to the place where I belong. Pat your mama, I'm coming home to the place where I belong. Catch a mama coming home to the place where I belong. Catch a mama coming home to the place where I belong. Give your fingers and your toes a little wake up wiggle. Running a nice long stretch through the body, fingers all the way through toes. Curling your knees into your chest, giving your body a nice little hug. And then just slowly making your way up to join and seated, crisscross. Hands at heart center. And then we close with an intention. That our yoga practice remain steady. That our efforts on this path remain continuous. That our yoga serves and benefits all beings everywhere. May all beings be safe, be happy, be healthy, be free. May the thoughts and actions of each of our lives contribute towards this. And we'll finish with an ohm. Inhaling, exhaling, inhaling through to make the ohm. So a big breath in. Big breath out. Big breath in. Oh. Thank you so much for sharing the space and the practice. The light in me. Season honors the light in you. Namaste. Thank you guys for joining.